I think this, this whole part of what it means to be a solution in community, following Christ, sent to the young. To live that out, I think, is certainly a pathway to holiness. There are two distinct moments where we as Salesians pray together in community. The first will be in the morning. We would have morning prayer from uh, the Breviary Liturgy of the Hours, and then we would have 30 minutes of silent meditation, and then after that, we do Mass together in community. And then our second block would be in the evening, before dinner, we all get back from school or whatever ministries that we're doing, and we would do evening prayer also from the Liturgy of the Hours, and then we would do some spiritual reading. We have a, a book, separate people read separate books, and we do that together for 15 minutes. As a community, every Sunday, we do adoration together. It's a beautiful way to have I celebrate Sunday in a special way, have adoration. Occasionally, people go on rosary walks together through the neighborhood, they pray the rosary. So those are not scheduled sort of informal moments where people pray together. I think it's a necessity that we pray together because we're in the mission together. If we're not praying together, I think that we would lose the source of our mission. So the source of our mission should be rooted in prayer. Sure, you could be on your own. I know there's groups that do that, but I think our mission would be so disjointed and ununified and uninspired in a sense if we weren't praying together. St. John Bosco and he named our congregation after St. Francis de Sales. So there's elements of the St. Francis de Sales in terms of how we pray and how we live in terms of gentleness and charity. Um, but we do stress this idea of joy and optimism in terms of how we pray and how we live. And then we also talk about sort of friendship with Jesus and Mary. So it's a relational thing in terms of the foundation of St. John Bosco of the Salesians. He had this dream at the age of nine with Mary who pretty much laid out this mission for him to convert young people. And that stays with him his whole life. So Mary is there from the very beginning. She's the inspirer of our congregation, really through this dream and through the continual support. I mean, you can be close to Mary in many different ways in terms of prayer, but rosary is the one that we think of. And so that's why we pray the rosary every day. Is It's acknowledging our roots, but also it's trying to keep Mary daily involved in the carrying out of our mission. The evangelical counsels that we profess are poverty, chastity, and obedience. So how can I live these out more and more. Really trying to answer the question, uh, what is being poor mean? What is being chaste mean? What is being obedient to me? The very beginning of our profession firmly is God, you consecrated me on the day of my baptism. You know, you reflect on your life as this journey in terms of faith. And so knowing that God has called you from actually the moment of your baptism is I think such a powerful line. God's presence in my life throughout every day of my life, especially at the moment of my baptism and how professing the vows, becoming a consecrated religious is is tied into that, I think is that sort of the epic scope that God has for all of us. Mm -hmm.